Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Adrienne Montgomery with ERP VAR. We've got a lot to present today. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Kent get started. Thank you so much, Kent. Oh, well, Adrian, thank you very much. Um, certainly greatly appreciate the opportunity through ERP VAR to, to speak to a an audience of what, from what I understand with registrations, we've got over 115 folks registered today. So, you know, I really appreciate everybody taking the time. Uh, as Adrian said, please don't hesitate to ask a question. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my email address is up there, kent.richeson at acumatica.com. Uh, certainly don't hesitate to reach out to me directly if you've got some feedback on, on how this content or this presentation can be approved, or you've got a question, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. Um, it's a, you know, this is a difficult conversation, uh, but necessary. I think we all find us in this this situation in our personal lives and our professional lives, navigating this concept of the new normal, and we're going to talk about that today because it's uh, it's something that's in our lives all the time. So let's go ahead and get started. Today's agenda is we're going to talk about accepting and acknowledging the fact that there is a new normal. We're going to accept and acknowledge that some of the changes we've seen that partners have had to embrace uh, moving into the 21st century are only going to be accelerated as we embrace and participate in the new normal. And I am going to spend some time today accentuating how Acumatica's distinguishing value can help partners and customers in the new normal. So that's today's agenda. I hope that meets with everybody's approval. So who is this guy? We have a pretty, a pretty large audience today. Um, I had a chance to, to look at the registration list. We have a, a good community of Acumatica partners out there. So most of you know me, uh, and most of you have either th sat through my practice owner and executive workshop or, or on a, been on a previous webinar with me. So you know what you're in for and you came anyway, so thank you very much. And, and for those of you that don't know me, um, I've been in the, in the ERP space for, for SMB customers for about 20 years. I began life as a Great Plains partner, uh, so I've walked a mile in, in a partner's shoes. Uh, I've worked exclusively in the channel, uh, predominantly for SAP, the Business One and By Design product, with a couple of brief stops at Sage and even Oracle NetSuite. Uh, more importantly, uh, I've got sales and pre-sales experience. I had the great honor and privilege to, to serve as, as an officer in the United States Marine Corps. I'm a fly fisherman. Uh, if you want to get me started and hear me really get excited, ask me about fly fishing or ask me about my grandson, Hayes, who's two and a half years old as of yesterday. So uh, we're, we live down here in North Carolina now, and uh, we're close to family, which is, which is great, even in, in these difficult times. So before we begin, thank you. Thank you very much for your time today. For the Acumatica partners that are out there, thank you for your continued commitment and investment in your Acumatica practices. It's greatly appreciated. For those of you that are considering becoming an Acumatica partner, thank you for your interest. Uh, as everyone knows, Acumatica is 100% channel driven. We have no direct sales force. We have no direct professional services organization that competes with our partners. So the better, we, the better our partners do, the better we do. So thank you very much for your interest and your commitment. Please, everybody continue to be safe and smart and stay healthy out there. We're going to get through this. There is a, you know, another end to this, but let's make sure we're being smart, uh, being sensitive to the environment that we're in, and stay healthy, everybody. Let's be clear, you know, there's nothing good that's coming out of COVID-19. We all wish this, this didn't happen. Um, so it, it is what it is. It's the circumstance we find ourselves in. That being said, there are opportunities in the new normal, in the circumstance that we find our, ourselves today. And we don't mean opportunity in the, in the grandiose, happy circumstance, but there's an opportunity for us to reinvent ourselves, to restructure ourselves, to re-engage with the market. And now's the time for us to take advantage of those opportunities. And that's what I'm going to be speaking about today. Today's objective, because I was in the Marine Corps, we have to have an objective. Uh, most of my objectives are, are, are rooted in to politely suggest uh, what we're going to talk about. But I do believe for this subject matter that I am going to firmly suggest that the impact of COVID-19 has created a lasting business environment that's gonna be classified as the new normal. This is not Y2K. 
This is not a four digit date field that as soon as January 2nd, 2000 comes along and the world didn't end, we all go back to normal. What's happening today is going to persist. And I'm gonna be pretty firm about that. We're gonna introduce content and revisit previous content designed to empower partners who can choose an accelerated path to be successful in the new normal. And we're gonna again commit Acumatica support to any partner at any time that wants to move along this journey to becoming a 21st century bar and succeeding in the new normal. I have the good fortune today to be the, the voice of Acumatica, but I am, I'm only the tip of the iceberg. I represent an incredibly talented group of people, Sean Chatterjee and his partner account management team, uh, Jeff Ashley and the enablement team, uh, Jessica Gadboys, Eric Moreau, Paul Layton, uh, our recruiting team of Scott Koblenz and Noel Bloxen. There's a whole bunch of people here at Acumatica that are ready, willing, and able to help, and, and our commitment is that we will do so. So let's define the new normal. I told you this was going to go fast. I've been practicing this. We're right up against an hour, so bear with me. Hang on. Here we go. So Acumatica Partner BDO describes the new normal is that it's going to have a direct and lasting impact on organizations of all sizes. You can't, you know, you can't take a lap around the interwebs right now and not bump into some analyst, some expert that, that, can, that is speaking about the impact of COVID-19. Ernst & Young, uh, I've highlighted the areas um, that, that I think are important. There's four ways to enable your workforce in remote working environments. And then there's enterprise resiliency, nine areas of focus for COVID-19 crisis management. Forbes magazine, okay, the, the, blue, the blue paragraph I've got highlighted there is, is that for starters, as businesses embrace work from home, investments in video conferencing and collaboration software are essential. And I'm going to firmly suggest that a cloud-based business management solution such as Acumatica or a cloud-based ERP solution such as Acumatica is the actual working definition of collaboration software. It's how your accounting department works together with your sales department, with your operations department, with your manufacturing people, with your warehouse organization. That is the working definition of collaboration software. And as your workforce becomes distributed, you have to invest in a platform that's going to allow you to be successful. McKinsey, for those of you that aren't familiar with McKinsey, uh, you know, e-commerce and web presence is going to be even more critical. You know, it's amazing to me how many people are just discovering what, hey, wow, this Amazon thing, I can order groceries and they show up on my front porch. Well, I got news for you. Your customer and the world we live in are going to be more online and less offline. You're going to not be able to spend as much face-to-face, -face, fully functioning carbon life form time with your customers and your prospects. So your website, your web presence, your intellectual property, and your deliverables are going to have to be just as on point as these e-retailers are. So web presence and offline sales and marketing for partners as well as customers is going to be critical. This is what I found this week, and this is part, if you, if you sat through this original presentation that we gave a couple of weeks ago to the internal Acumatica partner community, you know, McKinsey has come out just in the last week or so with the concept of the new normal is rapidly evolving into the next normal. And I do fundamentally believe this, that, you know, this is here to stay. And this is a great article that I would encourage everybody to read. So if you're, we're recording this, the recording will be out there. You can do a quick search for this. Yeah, look for the image, you know, driving digital change, the chief digital officer. A lot of us are rolling our eyes saying, gee, Ken, a lot of my prospects don't have a digital officer. Yes, but they do have somebody that's responsible for making sure the organization is successful. And if we want to define them as the digital officer, then guess what? You now assume that, that title and responsibility. But these four things that they talk about, you know, number one, number two, number three, and number four. I'm going to zero in on number three. Now is the time for you guys to be engaging with your customers to prepare for the next normal. And, and a little bit of foreshadowing here, I do believe Acumatica is a great platform that we should be introducing to our customers. So summarizing the new normal and preparing for the next normal, COVID-19 is going to have a lasting impact AKA it's gonna be the next normal. Enterprise resiliency is critical for you and your customers. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody was prepared for the distributed workforce, but you have to be for, in, for future events. You have to future-proof your business. You have to be resilient. You have to be able to adapt and overcome and quickly 
move on from difficult situations. The distributed and, work, and remote workforce is here to, say, here to stay. This includes you, value-added resellers. You're gonna be asked and required to do more remotely with your customers and your prospects than you've ever done before. So you have to prepare yourself to do that. E-commerce and enhanced web pre presence will accelerate even faster, and this applies to your partners. Now is the time for your website to rise. I look at everybody's website. We look at your website when you're, when you're coming to Acumatica. We look at your website all the time. I got news for you guys. Everybody's website looks the same. I can tell you right now that it says across the top, this is what we're about. This is what we do. These are the solutions that we offer. Here are the testimonials that we have. And then we all have a drop down. Your website's gonna have to get a lot better than that and it's gonna have to focus on some things we're gonna talk about in the next session. Section, excuse me. All right. So we don't know what the future holds. We know this concept of the new normal is here and the next normal is coming. However, I believe, what, I believe in what Peter Drucker said, the best way to predict the future is to go out and create it. So we're gonna talk about how do we create that future for ourselves to be successful in this new and next normal. So there, agenda topic number one, check. Moving on to agenda topic number two. Accept and acknowledge that partner value was changing before COVID-19 and it's gonna change faster. We all saw what was happening in the marketplace, okay? We all saw that software being, was being delivered differently, customers were consuming it differently, our competitors were going to market differently, we had to redefine ourselves differently, managed services, packaged services, intellectual property, all of these things we were thinking about that we were moving towards COVID-19 is now the catalyst that is going to accelerate that migration that we have to undertake as value-added resellers. All right, it's all, not all doom and gloom, guys, not all doom and gloom. So a little time, we'll take a quick little break, take a deep breath, and time for some inspiration. So 40 years ago, I was reminded, watching reruns on ESPN, that Herb Brooks coached and led uh, the 1980 U.S. hockey team, The Miracle on Ice. And if you haven't watched Herb Brooks' speech, which is in this YouTube link here, look for that picture. This quote is just so perfect for our time, and it resonates so clearly for where we find ourselves today. Great moments are made from great opportunity, or come from great opportunities. We have a great opportunity here to reinvent ourselves, redeploy ourselves, restructure ourselves, reintroduce ourselves to our customers. And this can be a great moment for us as partners, okay? We can prepare ourselves to be successful for the next 20 years if we do the right things. It's a great speech and I encourage you guys out to go out there and look at it. So the changes we see are accelerating. For those of you uh, that have been through this a little bit before, yeah, it'll be a little bit of a repeat, but for those of you that, that haven't, um, I have the great privilege of, of knowing a gentleman by the name of Bob Anderson, who's been serving the Gartner mid-market ERP space for over 20 years, and we've gotten to know each other, and, and Bob has graciously allowed me to, to share um, much of his content that he introduced uh, at a roundtable discussion we had very late in 2018 that we introduced to our partners uh, at Summit of 2019. And I check with Bob pretty regularly. This is all consistent and relevant and current today, but, but here's where the world is going. And uh, I'm not trying to be cutesy here, but the, the icons I've got out to the left are gonna identify that the items we're gonna talk about are accelerating now because of COVID-19. So as partners, or the, the first thing on the left-hand side I'm going to build out, excuse me, is what are the customer expectations or customer demands they're looking for that are only being accelerated by COVID-19? The first thing is instant availability everywhere on anything. Makes sense. Everybody's at home. Nobody's in the office. COVID-19 is requiring everybody to have access to their business management system anytime, anywhere, any device. There has to be intelligent embedded technologies for that to happen, okay? The second thing is that my product that is now in my distributed workforce needs to be configured. There has to be a platform within that product that allows me to extend it. So my digital distributed 
business management system can connect to my other distributed business management systems like DocuSign, Office 365, whatever it might be. So there has to be a platform that allows for that extensibility. Other customer demands, consumer level simplicity. It has to be something that customers can, can use. Okay, they're not in the office. They can't walk down the hall and say, Mary, can you remind me how to do this? Or how do I get to that screen? It has to be something that they can adopt and use very quickly and very easily. Access over ownership. What do we mean there? Well, because they can't have their IT staff on site with a wrench fixing the printer drivers and, and tweaking the servers as it were, owning all of that hardware in their own data center doesn't do them any good. It's access to this business management software that they need, and this is where software as a service comes in. It needs to be able to extend and integrate seamlessly. I have to have that open API infrastructure that allows my business management system to continue to connect to other things, improve connections between data and people. I can't walk down the hall and ask, hey, can you show me the P&L from this? Can you get me that financial report? What's our inventory report? All of this has to be done digitally, and all of this has to be done remotely, and all of this is accelerating because of COVID-19. The last one there is success measured by outcomes, okay? I didn't put a COVID-19 symbol next to that because this is consistent, and this is a challenge that we all face. Whether we like to admit it or not, the, the feature functionality of software that exists in the world today is incredibly powerful. QuickBooks Enterprise, general ledger accounts payable and accounts receivable can take your business a long way. And if you're just gonna get into a demo war on feature function versus this GL versus that GL versus this AP versus that AR versus this purchase order, you know, you're gonna lose more than you win because you've commoditized yourself and people are only gonna pick on, on you know, the price that you put in front of them. So the outcome is what you need to focus on. The technology that you use and the outcomes that you produce is what your customers want to see. So stop becoming experts on how to configure an Acumatica GL and sub-account and start figuring out how Acumatica or the technology that you represent produces economic value and outcomes for your customers. So if these are the incredible demands that our customers have, what are we going to do as VARs to be better prepared in the marketplace? So what do we have to do to stay relevant? The first thing we have to do, reading from top to bottom, is we have to help with innovation. Again, it's no longer enough for us to be the experts in the, in the software. Uh, I go back, oh, I'm old enough to go back to the days when, when I ordered Great Plains software, it was shipped to my office at the Taylor Group in a shrink-wrapped you know, box, and I cracked the seal and wrote down the, the license keys and took them on site and stuck them into the server with, for the customer, and I configured everything. We don't do that anymore. There's a website, there's a URL that they connect to and the software is available. So we have to do more now to help our customers. We have to help them with new business models. We have to help them get speed, their speed to market. We help, have to help them be competitive. That's, that drives back to the outcome. It's no longer for enough for us to be the best at configuring Acumatica, Oracle NetSuite, Sage 100, you know, Microsoft Navision, Solomon, Great Plains, whatever it is. It's not enough anymore, guys. And we have to bring efficiency to our customers. We have to be the experts. I'm a big believer in the challenger sales model. You have to walk through the door and say confidently, but not arrogantly, Mr. Customer, these are the best practices you need to drive to. Here's how I can help you get there. Here are the outcomes I can produce for you. This is what you need to do today as a value added reseller to be relevant. The value, the V, in value-added reseller has transmorgified itself, that's an old Calvin and Hobbes reference, into no longer do you, are you the software expert, you really truly have to be that trusted business advisor expert. Moving on, Roger, Roger, moving on. Okay, this is again another Gartner Group slide, and, and what Bob talks about is that SaaS will accelerate everything, and COVID-19 is gonna only accelerate what's happening in SaaS. Working on the top going, clockwise, the products. There's a reason every single publisher is going to a SaaS model and a subscription model. It's an economic decision. Companies have better valuations. You will have better valuations as a partner if you have a recurring revenue model versus a license and professional services model. 
the license from and professional services valuation model is anywhere from 80 to a, 80 cents to a, maybe a dollar and 10 cents and a recurring revenue model can be upwards of seven times that valuation so there's a reason all the products are going to a recurring revenue model just like there's a reason services are going to a recurring revenue model so your sales process has to change, which means the revenue model changes, which means your professional services have to change. So there's a huge reset button that's happening in the software as a service model that's only going to be accelerated with the new normal and the next normal. So that means your culture and the value you produce to customers has to change because no longer is it good enough for you to sell software and then just deliver one hour of consulting with one consultant for one customer on a large complex statement of work. It's not what they expect. It's not what they demand. It's not what they desire. We think here at Acumatica that unique in the industry, we've been working with our partners to help change and, and educate how this evolution is happening. We've conducted now, well, we've taken almost 200 and something owners and executives through practice owner and executive workshops moving to the, the 21st century model. If you're interested in that, we're here to help you with that. Uh, we have a practice owner and executive forum where the, the people that have gone through that course are now working together to in a community to help themselves get better. So it's a, a huge opportunity uh, for you guys to leverage what's gone before and Acumatica is here to help. So. That's enough of Bob Anderson and the Gartner Group. And what that means is that delivering early visible results becomes part of the new normal, which means a packaged solution is now even more important. So I ask partners all the time, what percentage of any ERP implementation is the same? That's enough time to think about it. Okay, if 70 plus percent is the same, then you already know how to define package mark and sell, market and sell a demo to 70% of the solution. This means it's, it can be less, less expensive, less complex, it can be more predictable, and it can deliver the exceptional value that your customers are looking for in a short period of time. One of the biggest reasons consultants leave organizations is they get burnt out. Burnt out. I've had many a consultant tell me, if I gotta go out and set up one more pick your product, general ledger, I'm just going to kill myself, okay? It's just, it becomes so redundant. Yeah, they've got to do it for a utilization rate, and yeah, they've got to do it for billable hours, but it really doesn't excite them anymore. So let's figure out a way to package the mundane stuff and redeploy and, and re-engage our, our talented consultants in other areas. So what we're talking about here is truly packaging something that can be consumed either via self-service or it can be delivered by a more junior consultant or it can be delivered in a one-to-many environment and that will depend greatly on the profile of a prospect you're pursuing which we'll talk about in just a second so if you can do this if you can walk through the door and say to a customer every single distribution organization we talk to has these five challenges Every single discrete manufacturer has these five challenges. Every field service, every e-commerce has these five challenges. Here's how we solve for that. Here's, how, here's the outcomes we produce. And here is the early visible results package we can deliver for you. I got news for you. Your customers want that. And they are going to respond very favorably to that. Now, there are metrics in this new normal we need to pay attention to. I love Mark Benioff's quote, speed is the new currency of business. When this is over, when COVID-19 passes and America's open for business and we get back to as much of a normal or next normal as we can, there is going to be a pent up demand. And your customers, just like we're having this conversation today about, oh my God, what are we gonna do? How can we be successful? What can we do to reposition ourselves, reinvent ourselves? They're thinking about this too. And when they make those decisions, they're gonna wanna go fast and we're gonna to have to be prepared to go fast with them. If we ask them to go into a long drawn out sales cycle and a long drawn out professional services engagement, I think they're gonna thumb their noses at us. Thumb their noses at us, easy for me to say. But not only is speed important, so not only are you gonna to have to be fast, but you're gonna to have to deliver high quality stuff, you're gonna to have to be efficient, and you're gonna to have to reduce the cost. That's impossible. Well, I go back to my earlier comment in the Marine Corps, um, you know, the Marine Corps always had to do the, the best, you know, the most with the least forever because the Air Force got all the money first. 
and then the Army, and then the Navy, and the Marine Corps got, you know, got the last. But that's kind of what you're going to be expected to do. Be really, really good for as affordably as you can be. EVR and rapid TTV or time to value become absolutely critical. So where we're going, where we are and where we're going is going to be even faster. So here's where we are today. Where we are today is most of us are traditional professional services organizations. We go out, we engage with the customer, we do a discovery document, we create a statement of work. And you know what? The more stuff we uncover, the more hours we can create, the more money we make. That is the traditional professional services model. We are incented to have long, complex services engagements. We're incented to create long, complex sales environments. We don't want to do that anymore because our customers don't want that anymore. So where we're going, and we're not going to get there today, but many of us are well on our way, is we want to deliver managed services. Okay, we want to focus on new customer acquisition. We want to package our services. We want to develop intellectual property to add to our subscription. We want to incent ourselves to create a, a phase one packaged solution that produces those five outcomes as quickly as we can, and then we build on that to grow the lifetime value of our customer. We can't do the big bang anymore. We can't do everything at once. We're going to have to do it in a phased approach, in a packaged approach, in a subscription approach. We're not there yet. And ERP or business management software will never, ever be a break, fix, managed service like a, like a desktop software. I get that. But much of what we do can get to that. And that's where we need to focus our efforts. So this slide in the next normal becomes even more important. What slide are you talking about there, Kent? Well, bear with me. I'm going to tell you in just a second. So Deloitte did this great survey of medium-sized clients on what was most important to them when they purchased software. Okay? Well, guess what? Because we all look alike in the eyes of the customer, because we all do the same demo, because we all do the same corporate presentation, because we all produce the same statement of work, because we all have a billable hour rate, we, we have commoditized ourselves. So the only thing we allow customers to choose on is good old number one, the price. Shame on us for commoditizing ourselves and turning ourselves, as I like to tell our partners, into cell phone plans and giving the customer the choice between you know, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, whatever it might be. Shame on us. We've allowed this to happen and we need to stop it. So, but the second time people buy software, what becomes most important? What becomes most important? Number one, on level of support provided by my reseller partner. This is absolutely fundamentally why Acumatica believes going to market through partners is the way to go to market. We can't be everything to everybody. Partners will take those customers, those last 10 miles, the last mile or the last 10 yards into the end zone to be successful. We're never going to be able to be everything to every customer. The, the, the expertise, the intellectual property that our partners bring is ultimately was going to make that customer successful, which is why we're committed to the partner channel. And it's, you know, it's wonderful to see that that's what customers value as well. The prospect profile becomes even more critical in the five Ps. Now, bear with me, okay? Many of my partners have been through this. This is a sales methodology that I put together, you know, coming out of the Marine Corps as a partner uh, at, the, at the Taylor Group, you know, profile process, personalization, push, and postmortem. But it begins with profile. You have to decide as a partner, where am I going to spend my time, talent, and treasure? I can't be all things to all people, okay? I'm going to have to pick that I'm really good at this. Now, how do I know what I'm really good at? Well, you're, you're successful people. You're successful organizations. Go back and ask your customers and mine your customer base. You are sitting on a gold mine. Go back, get that information, narrow it down and say, you know what? We're really good at helping people manage inventory. You know, we're really good at helping people manage supply chain management. You know, we're really good at sales efficiency. Then you find customers or prospects that can benefit from what you are really good at. Then you take what you're really good at that you've done over and over and over again. You understand the cost of it. You package it. You make it consumable in a different manner. And we're well on our way to having a package services for an identified profile. If you have to change who you are for 
every prospect every time. You will never be an expert at anything. You'll never understand to the depth that you need to understand, you know, the profile and the processes for that prospect. So you're going to have to build in fluff. We're not going to be able to get where we need to go. So profile becomes incredibly important. That personalization piece is the economic impact and the outcome that you're producing for those key users within your prospect. So talking about this grid on personalization. So what the heck is this grid thing you're talking about? Guys, I encourage every single one of my partners, anytime you're talking to a customer or a prospect, you need to have a nine by nine grid on the executive team, line of business, and technology. And you know what? If you can't fill out five of those squares with names, phone numbers, email, and economic impact that you're going to deliver for them, for them, I would suggest firmly and politely that you don't have a highly qualified opportunity. This is something you really need to strive to. And in the new normal, these things change. So what do executives need to survive and or thrive in the new normal? What changes in the line of business for the new normal and the next normal? And what technology investments are they considering to survive or thrive in the new normal? So what happened 90 days ago is different than what's ha happening today. So if you do have a grid, thank you very much, for your prospects and your customers, you have to go back and revisit it as it relates to the new normal and the next normal. Okay, bear with me, guys. It's a lot of stuff. We're hanging in there. We're doing great. You know, so who do decision makers and end users buy from? Well, this comes right out of the challenger sales model. If you look in the upper right hand corner there, this is what customers want. They want people that walk through the door and say, this is what you should be doing. This is how it should be going. I, I have this conversation with partners all the time. How many times have we left a meeting with a customer, sat in the car and said, oh, my goodness, how, how do those people survive? How do they make money? I got news for you. If you walk through the door and you sit with a customer and say, here in your industry, in your business, these are the five key performance indicators that you need to measure to. Here's the outcome I produce. Here's how I can bring value to you. And here are my customers that have achieved these kind of results. When you leave, they're going to be sitting in the conference room going, oh, my God, I hope they come back. We need that. So this is that challenger sales model where you don't walk through the door and ask them, help me understand or tell me your pain points or this, that, and the other. You walk through the door and say, almost everybody we talk to has these five challenges. Could you force rank or prioritize for them? Is there one we missed? Become that trusted business advisor, become that industry expert, and I challenge you sell yourself to become this person. If you haven't read the challenger sales model, get the book on Amazon. There's no baseball on TV at night. Read some books and we'll all be better off. I miss my Red Sox, although they are in first place right now. Please, please, please. If you haven't read this article, Acumatic of ours, Stop Selling Accounting Software. It's a, it's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great article on the Acumatic website. A lot of us grew up selling accounting software, the good old Glapper deals, G-L-A-P-A-R, SOP and POP, sales order, purchase order, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. We've been doing it for years. We need to stop doing it. We sell business management software. Let me tell let me tell you a story. I, I was on a on a on a partner partner on a product demonstration with a partner a couple of weeks ago. And it was core financials. Um, and this partner did a great job. This partner understood Acumatica and was certified on demonstrating Acumatica, knew the product inside out, upside down, backwards and forwards, played Acumatica financials like a concert pianist, did a great job. And when we finished the product demonstration, we asked a couple of questions and the feedback from the customer was, well, you guys did great. And, you know, uh, you're, in, you're, in the, you're in the ballpark with everybody else, you know, because guess what? Everybody else has good GLs too. Everybody else has good payables and receivables too. What we didn't show in that product demonstration was anytime, anywhere, any device. We didn't show the connected cloud. We didn't show the things that are relevant to the distributed workforce. We got consumed by feature function of accounting software. I'm going to suggest firmly and politely that stop selling accounting software and start selling the technology platform that's going to allow companies to be successful in the next normal. In fact, I would suggest you tell the customer when you're talking to them, say, Kent, we're going to put the functionality over here to the side. 
And we're going to talk about how the platform you're investing in is going to enable your organization to be successful in these areas. And once we agree that we can solve these operational distributed workforce and technology platform questions, then I will fold back in the general ledger, accounts payable, an inventory item, an order to cash, the things that you need. I will prove that to you, but you don't need to make your decision based on that. You need to make your decision based on so many other things that are impacting your business. And we have to start drilling into that and leading our product demonstrations and conversations with that. But Ken, we don't have anything you're talking about. We aren't ready, we can't. This is so aggravating, I'm so depressed. Don't be depressed. We will improvise, we will adapt, and we will overcome. Clean Eastwood, that's Gunny Highway in uh, Heartbreak Bridge, for those of you who haven't seen that movie. I would, I would publish the YouTube link, but there's some not suitable for work language on there. But you have content. You have your customer stories. You can improvise. You can adapt what you've done, low these 20 years, to help you overcome the inertia that you're feeling today. It's there, and we can help you marshal it, we can help you reinvent it, we can help you redeploy it. it it's not always, it's not lost, okay? So, Kent reminds you that perfection is the enemy of progress, we need to take action. Let's take a quick moment, okay? Starting today, our websites and virtual lunch and learn events must represent the reality of, of today with content and thought leadership on the new normal, the distributed workforce, and the resilient enterprise. If your website doesn't have these things on them, they better have them on them pretty quick because this is what your customers are looking for. So you need to get with your marketing team, you need to get with your website designer, you need to figure out how I'm going to take these concepts and put them on my website. Then we are going to lead and challenge our legacy on-premise product customers to join us on this journey to the new normal. I'm gonna tell you that I believe as partners, as true trusted business advisors and partners with your customers, you need to go to your very best customers that are struggling with on-premise solutions today. And if you're an Acumatica partner, you need to introduce Acumatica to them post haste. You have a responsibility to help them be successful. Yes, I work for Acumatica, but I also believe objectively that at this moment in time, Acumatica's technology, Acumatica's go-to-market strategy and our functionality just happens to be the solution that is unfortunately best positioned in the unfortunate circumstance we find ourselves in. But I, I hear from partners all the time say, you know, Kent, they're my best customer and they're running Great Plains, they're running NAV, they're running Solomon, they're running whatever. And I'm afraid if I, I go introduce and say, you should look at a new solution that they're going to open it up to everything and I could lose them as a customer. That's a sad way to go through life, guys. Okay, because I got news for you. Your customers being marketed by your competitors anyway. So it, I would much rather you deliver that message and guide them to a successful future than have somebody smoke jump in and steal that customer away from you. You have a responsibility to lead them and challenge them into the new normal and the next normal. Okay, and then we're also going to spend time considering, you know, what's the prospect profile we want to pursue because it's going to have to move fast. So we're going to have to be ready to move fast. So. The new normal is not happening in a vacuum. Deep breath, Kent. Here we go. How are we doing on time? Let's see. 2.32. We're doing great. We're going to make it. We're going to make it, everybody. So the new normal is not happening in a vacuum. It's not enough to be in the cloud, guys. It's not enough. I hear partners all the time saying, well, I've got a cloud-based solution. It's not enough to be in the cloud. Okay? Cloud is not a magic bullet. The cloud is not pixie dust. The cloud isn't something that is going to solve all the world's problems. However, if you're gonna be in the cloud, you might as well be in the best cloud, okay? Amazon Web Services and Amazon Infrastructure is the top rated cloud infrastructure provider out there. You can see where Oracle NetSuite data centers are, okay? So over 90% of Acumatica customers choose our software as a service model, which is delivered by the, by the Amazon infrastructure environment. It is the Acumatica cloud within Amazon. It's run and managed by Acumatica engineers. That's where our disaster recovery is. That's where our service level agreement is. That's where our geo redundancy comes out of. So Amazon Web Services, if you're gonna be in the cloud, is the best place to be. 
I remind my partners all the time to get on Twitter, and I'm going to tell everyone on this call today, if you don't have a Twitter account, you better get one, and you better start following the industry that we're all, we all find ourselves in. Start following Acumatica. You know, Todd Wells and our Acumatica marketing team put a bunch of great content out there. Follow the other players in the industry. Follow Microsoft. Follow Sage. Follow Oracle NetSuite. In fact, if you've been following Oracle NetSuite, you'd, you'd see the reality of just choosing, quote, their cloud isn't necessarily a silver bullet. Uh, I love my man Brody Hat Hadley down on the bottom left hand. And these are all at NetSuite. So I follow at NetSuite. And it was it was unfortunate, but it was empowering to read the this incredible thread. I just picked a few of them. You know, get your stuff together, NetSuite. This, ha this is happening way too often. I love David Smith on the bottom right there. You're killing me, Smalls. I'm a movie guy. That's from Sandlight. You're killing me, Smalls. Okay, it wasn't just March 10th and 11th. It continued into the 25th and the 26th. I love Stephen Mulek up there on the upper right. You know, on 316, they commit to support their customers. 319, they're down. 325, they're down. Oracle NetSuite was down more in the month of March than we've been down ever. So again, choosing the cloud isn't just what you need to do. You have to choose the right cloud. And oh, by the way, Oracle NetSuite can only run in Oracle NetSuite data centers. Acumatica can run in Amazon Web Services where the majority of our customers reside. But if a customer says, you know, I don't want to run on Amazon. I want to run on Azure or I want to run in the Google Cloud or I want to run in a local data center that we have a great relationship with. Well, then Acumatica allows for that workload to be ported into another data center. And God forbid if the customer says, I want to have an on-premise solution, we allow for that as well. So moving on, you know, the new normal doesn't happen in a vacuum. So what is this? Well, this is the last six months of stock performance of our primary publicly traded competitors, Oracle, Microsoft, and SAP. Oh, gee whiz, Kent, you know, no big news there. Everybody's stock has been going down, you know, based on what's going on in the marketplace. I get that. But what happens when the stock price goes down? Well, everybody wants the stock price to go back up. And the UK wasn't spared, you know, Team Green, you know, they had the same ex experience. So as everybody's stock price is going down, what do they want to do? They have shareholders to respond to. They have quarterly earnings calls to make. They need to get the stock price back up. So what do they do? Well, I'll tell you what they do. They poach your customers. They take that business direct. They cut your margin right out. They take it direct. They they use that to inflate their stock price. They ask you or they say, you know, we've been calling these guys forever. They were in our pipeline. You can have the services if you'd like. We hear this from partners all the time. And it's only going to happen more frequently. The direct sales organizations that compete with you are going to continue to compete with you even more so. I love John Roskell, our CEO. Uh, you know, for those of you that haven't met John yet, um, you know, John is a very pragmatic person. Uh, he, he continues to represent Acumatic in the marketplace as a technology company, which is what we are. Okay, we're a technology company that has great product functionality. The other thing John will tell a partner, if you ask him, we've had many partners ask John, you know, when are you guys going to start selling direct? John will flat out tell you, there is no plan B, guys. If our partners aren't successful, Acumatic is not successful. So if you're an Acumatica partner, thank you for making us successful. If you're considering uh, becoming an Acumatica partner, we're counting on you to continue to help us be successful. Okay, so this moment is going to end. Are you going to be ready? Are you going to be like Usain Bolt, you know, busting out of the blocks and taking the lead and, and being able to respond to your customers quickly? Or are you going to be like good old number eight down there in the bottom, stuck in the blocks, still trying to figure it out? All right, bear with me, guys. A lot of content today. So I fundamentally believe and firmly believe that the Acumatica fundamentals are needed now more than ever in the new normal. Okay, and Adrian, I, I told you I was going to do this. So if, if, for those of you that saw the, uh, the ERP bar invitation that had this incredibly great graphic on it, I, sh I stole that. And, and this, is, uh, this is Adrian's graphic where, you know, unlocking the, the, you know, the, the power of Acumatica in the new normal. So I'm going to be using this one moving forward, Adrian. This is a great, great visual. Thank you. So Acumatica's fundamental and foundational differentiators in the marketplace. We were born in the cloud. Now, if you're an Acumatica partner and you're out there thinking Acumatica made big bets, big bets on HTML5 and web services, you know what I'm going to say. That's not why born in the cloud is so important. 
why being born in the cloud is so important is that every single line of code, every piece of functionality that we deliver to our customers was built to be consumed and delivered in the cloud. If you're a Microsoft partner, you know that not everything that's in Great Plains, Solomon, or Navision is making its, made to, making its way to whatever they're calling their cloud product today, finance and operations, business central, whatever, whatever name they want to plaster on it. Okay, same thing with Sage. What's going to make it to the cloud? Acumatica is 100% in the cloud, so there's no risk as to what functionality is going to come forward. Anytime, anywhere, any device. We're browser agnostic. We could be on your Android device. We can be on your, your iPhone. We can be on your tablet. We can be on your laptop. This is not our most important value proposition, but it's something as an Acumatica partner or a soon-to-be Acumatic partner, you need to show each and every time and tell the story on how we're going to support the distributed, the distributed workforce. The connected cloud, critically important, but again, not the most important. Okay? As your customers continue to invest in other cloud applications, we have to knit them together. We have to connect them. So our API infrastructure and our web services layer allows for incredibly powerful and easy connections between cloud applications. For those of you that haven't seen the Alexa demonstration or the Siri demonstration or how we do voice, Acumatica can connect to almost every other element in the cloud. Again, very important, but not the most important. Flexible deployment options. Again, very important, but not the most important. And why are flexible deployment options important? Well, they're important to our, our customers because they may choose to be in software as a service, Amazon infrastructure. They may choose to be in a private cloud. They may choose to be in on-premise. But it's equally as important, if not more important, for our partners. Because what this means is if you call somebody and say, hey, Kent, I'd like to introduce you to Acumatica, and they say, man, I wish you'd have called me two months ago because we just put our Great Plains or our X or our Y or our Z in a local data center, come to me in two, month, in two years when our contract expires. If I'm an Oracle NetSuite rep, I have to walk away from that because I can only run Oracle NetSuite and Oracle NetSuite. If I'm Acumatica, I can say, no, 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 I don't have to walk away from that. I can run Acumatica in your data center, all right? And then you may have to run something in parallel for a short period of time, but then you can take down your other product workload, run in your private cloud for that X amount of time, and then move to Amazon at the end of the term if you want to. Again, very, very powerful, very, very powerful for your customers, very, very powerful for partners as well. But what's most important from an Acumatica foundational and fundamental standpoint? Modern consumption-based pricing, unlimited users. Acumatica goes to market without the user license model. It's not $3,000 per user. It's not $5,000 per user. It's based on the infrastructure you consume. Okay? And if you're not an Acumatica partner, trust me, this will become very comfortable for you. If you are an Acumatica partner, remember, it's infrastructure consumption, not transactions. That the, that, the part, that the customer is consuming. This is an incredibly powerful message in today's new normal and tomorrow's next normal. Because so many of our customers are sitting there th thinking to themselves, oh my goodness, my 10 person accounting team is now in 10 different locations. It used to be I only had five licenses and Kent and Mark could share or Mary and Susan could share logins and IDs. Now they can't do that. Now I have to have five more licenses. Well, if that's $3,000 a license, that's $15,000 more I have to spend. In Acumatica, everybody gets to benefit from the system and contribute to the system. If you're an Acumatica partner and you haven't asked your legacy customers that are on-prem if they're faced with this challenge, sort of kind of shame on you guys. Don't be afraid to introduce new opportunities to your customers. They're waiting for you to do it. Okay? Huge advantage here. Educate and remind your prospects that you can solve the license economic problem of the distributed workforce today. So those are the Acumatica foundational and fundamentals that are even more important and relevant in the new normal and the next normal. Here's some great Acumatica customer comments. I'm going to build them out here really quickly. Ah, too fast. I'm, I'm going to go to the last one there. Poor Liz, Liz Palmer of uh, Palmer Food Services in Nashville, Tennessee. 
tornado swept through and, and knocked out a great portion of where they were, and then COVID-19 came along. Thankfully, they had invested in Acumatica. They haven't missed a beat. If you're an Acumatica partner, you need to go out and get your customer to make a quote like this, and it needs to be front and center and foremost of your marketing path going forward. These are incredibly powerful statements that again, an anytime, anywhere, any device, distributed workforce, unlimited license, open, flexible collaboration software platform such as Acumatica can really bring value and benefit to our customers. Okay, quick time out. Deep breath, everybody. We're almost done. We're getting there. Let's, let's do an entrepreneurial call to action. I need you guys to block four hours out of your calendar, turn off your phone, and turn off your email. I get it. I could sit at my desk and do emails all day long. You could sit at your desk and do emails all day long. We need to return to our entrepreneurial roots, recapture that entrepreneurial spirit, go to the virtual whiteboard, okay? Block out this time and do this, okay? Get your websites designed. F identify those 10 customers. Figure out that profile. You've got to do this. If you don't, you're going to be consumed by everyday activities. And when the new normal becomes the next normal, you're not going to be ready to take advantage. I know that's a bad way to say it, but to participate or benefit or thrive or however you want to define it, the next normal. I want you guys to be ready. I want you to be successful. This is something you're going to have to do to prepare to be successful. Okay, this is a, a great article from Entrepreneur Magazine. Channel your inner entrepreneur. Okay, there's a popular meme going around today. Who's responsible for your company's digital transformation? Is it the CTO? Is it the CEO? Or was it COVID-19? Every company that we talk to is making some sort of move to a digital transformation. What does that mean? What does a digital transformation mean? It means getting off of paper. It means going from Excel to a tightly knit you know, suite of products that allows for real-time data update and sharing of, sharing of data across the organization. It means I don't have to walk from office to office or, or make phone calls or send things around via email. That's what a digital transformation means. Everybody's on that journey. COVID-19 is going to accelerate it, okay? I'm going to build this out real quick. All right. When we think about the next normal, recognize that cash is everything. Cash is king. Your customers are struggling right now. If they're in the, the restaurant business, you know, everybody's feeling the pinch. You know, businesses have been shut down. So their, their cash flow becomes imperative. How can you help them with cash flow? Well, subscription, subscription, subscription. Acumatica allows for monthly payments. Put things in front of them that they can consume monthly so they don't have to eat a big nut of licenses up front or a big nut of services up front. You have to reinvent, redeploy, and restructure yourselves to deliver subscription, subscription, subscription. You have to focus on growth, okay, internally. There's incremental innovation. There's sustaining innovation. Then there's disruptive innovation. I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes talking about disruptive innovation. There is no good time to disrupt your business. And it all depends on how you want to view, view disruption. Disruption can be very positive. I can disrupt the market in a very positive way. I can disrupt my company in a very positive way. That's what we're asking you to consider. Stunned silence. Kent, you're asking a lot. I know we're asking a lot, and we don't expect that you're gonna do everything that we're talking about today. Okay, this isn't a light switch type of environment where you walk to the wall, flip the switch and say, okay, we're doing everything completely different tomorrow. But we have to start to prepare ourselves to do things different tomorrow. Okay, don't panic. Tap into resources provided by the government and financial institutions. If you're an Acumatica partner, um, and hopefully you saw the Markham, the Acumatica partner, Markham Technology, who did a, a really good webinar on how to leverage the, the PPP loans and the S, working with the SBA. I'm pretty sure we've got that up on the Acumatica partner portal now. Uh, if, you, if you don't, reach out to Markham uh, and they can help you with that. T take advantage of what's out there. Make your financial plan. Find the opportunities. Use this time to upskill your staff. Okay. We're not all sitting around, you know, twiddling our thumbs, but, you know, let's, Let's take this time, if we've got it, to get better at what we do. 
Again, a great article from entrepreneur.com. Very, very quickly here. How are we doing on time? Well, we're running out of time. This is the Acumatica corporate presentation uh, that's on the Acumatica partner portal. Acumatica is the best choice for moving yourself into the digital economy. You know, we work on helping you become the resilient business with connected business delivered, rapid integrations to business delivered, remote collaboration delivered, business resiliency delivered, future proofing your business delivered. We're a well-respected, you know, platform across a broad broad spectrum of analysts uh, and editorial organizations. Anytime, anywhere, any device, open architecture that supports the connected cloud, flexible deployment options. This is the corporate presentation, consumption-based infrastructure licensing. This is important because we talked earlier today about consumer level simplicity, the ability to use a new system. Well, Nucleus Research says Acumatica is the highest rank in end user usability. People can use this, okay? We also happen to have a, a high emotional user sentiment at Acumatica. Now, people are going to say, well, the leader there is Oracle. Well, not many of our customers are, are going after Oracle. They go after, or they go after NetSuite, which is down there. Technology leadership on a future-proof platform. This is what we were talking about from earlier on with Bob Anderson. Okay, you have to have a platform in your product. Every single piece of functionality was built on the Acumatica platform. You can extend everything through the Acumatica platform. If you're not comfortable with this and you become an Acumatica partner, we will help you become comfortable. If you are an Acumatica partner, you need to get even more comfortable with the XRP platform. Modern security. As I've got the distributed workforce, security becomes very important. Two-factor authentication. When I go to sign on to my Acumatica application, I get a nice little text that says, please enter this code, so that Kent, the accounting manager, gets his information, and I know with confidence that, yes, that is Kent doing what he's supposed to be doing. So two-factor authentication becomes very, very important. If I'm a manufacturer and I need to invest in a platform, I'm going to become less reliant on people. So I have to be buzzword compliant around things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the Internet of Things. Well, the Acumatica platform affords for that. If you were at Summit this year, you saw the integration between robots and Acumatica, the warehouse robots. I mean, this is what we're doing. Not everybody's going to do it today, but they want to know that they're investing in a platform that will get them where they want to go. We have functionality that competes in the marketplace on the financial side, project, inventory, customer management. We have payroll now. We have a commerce edition, field service, construction, distribution, and manufacturing. We released 2020 R1 right in the middle of COVID-19. So, you know, kudos to the development team. Allow me a moment as we drive to the finish here. I'm awfully proud of Acumatica and, and what they've done. They're doing right by their partners. We've suspended any changes to the partner program. We've suspended any price changes to the product. We're doing right by our customers. We're allowing our customers to stay on, on older editions of Acumatica for a longer period of time. Uh, we're demonstrating leadership with our good partners, BDO and Markham, that are delivering value you know, out to our customers. We've released 2020 R1, and we've already begun planning for Summit 2021 in Las Vegas next year, where I'm confident we're all going to gather again and talk about how we were able to, you know, kind of struggle through this, but ultimately survive and, and reinvent ourselves and, and redeploy ourselves and position ourselves to, to be even more successful in the next normal. So, revisiting today's objectives. Again, I'm firmly suggesting to you folks that this new normal is going to be the next normal, and it's here to stay that the things that we saw changing in the marketplace or relative to the value you needed to produce is no longer just about the software. It's about delivering outcomes and future, helping your customers compete and, and succeed in the next normal. And to again, commit that Acumatica is here to help any partner that wants to go along on this journey. I'm gonna remind you, everybody, block those four hours on your calendar, get to the virtual whiteboard, redo your website, make sure that content is out there, find your legacy customers, educate them on where they need to be going and what they need to be considering, start figuring out the profile that you're going to pursue. Together, all of us are going to get through this. This is a, an homage 
uh, to one of our really good partners, uh, Dan Johnson of We Solve Cloud, uh, who came to Summit this year straight from Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, I think it's a great visual, you know, that if we put our customers in the in the middle there on the summit, that Acumatic and our partners on on the other side, we're all going to get to where we need to be. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to get there. Thank you. All right, everybody, have a great day. Thanks, Thanks for joining. Bye bye.